views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to Open, the one and only show that opens up the Bronx and the world to you. Here we go again. I'm your host, the Doc Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS, and we've got a great show lined up for you today. Coming up on today's show, we'll take a look at a, uh, a walk working to promote self-awareness and expression. Plus, we'll sit down with, a, with an author and a life coach. We'll look at her latest work in empowering some serious programs. We'll tell you more about that. After that, we'll find out about a campaign designed right here for the Bronx youth and uh, learn about issues they are facing. And then we'll learn about a, a workshop for Bronx seniors providing education on health care. Then we'll preview a gala coming up for education and support for sickle cell disease. We'll have that and a whole lot more. And then later on, we'll check out a, a community Earth Day event right here in our borough. So stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way. Hey, we're open. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open, the only live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Now, leading things off on June the 2nd, I Self Express will hold uh, their second annual Self Esteem Awareness Walk. I Self Express. Joining us with all the details, we have author and life coach, Narissa Jenkins. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How Thank are you? Thank so you so much. I am wonderful. Coach, I am wonderful. tell us about what you're doing. <sighs> so very excited about I Self Express, self, second annual mm -hmm. self-esteem awareness walk that will be held on Saturday, June 2nd at 2 p.m., forming in front of the Harlem State Building. And we will have a few speakers out. And once the speakers speak, then we will prepare ourselves to walk and chant up to 135th and St. Nicholas Avenue at the plaza. So it's going up Freddie D's, Frederick yes, Douglass? absolutely. Yes. So I'm very excited um, about that. Mm -hmm. Last year when I planned this walk, it was just an idea. And I brought, actually brought it to life. Yeah. And this year I see it growing. Isn't it great when you see it come to fruition? Yes. Here it is. Yes, it's wonderful. Right. It's wonderful. Yes. And every year you get more and more people participating. Yes. How did you come up with the name, I Self Express? So as you can see, I am a two-time author. The first book is Mysterious Me. Uh -huh. You will laugh, you might cry. Chapter 2 will for sure have you excited. And then my second book is Live, Love, and Confidence. It's a guide to building self-esteem mm -hmm. in girls and young women. It has over 60 short stories in here. I created two. When I look in the mirror, who do I see? Uh -huh. I see a lonely girl looking back at me. If I was a footprint, you'll be walking in, dot, dot, dot. But the lonely girl changes. The tall girl, the big girl, the fat girl, the eating disorder girl, the rape, molested. And it goes on from there. So I Self Express was inspired by um, some obstacles and challenges and adversities that mm -hmm. I actually suffered coming up as a young girl. and. I started writing. I put it into writing. And when I thought about creating my company in 2014, I said, mm -hmm. what would be the best title mm -hmm. to um, speak to me and who I am? Yeah. And that's how I Self Express came about. And you played uh, that song, Express Yourself. <laughs> no. So, yes. yeah, sometimes, where were you when this came about? Because, you know, sometimes there's a part of your room, your car, maybe the shower. You know, that is a good question, but I want to say that I might have been sitting at my desk where I actually have time to think and be creative. Mm -hmm. So I think I was at my desk when I came up with the title, I Self Express. There you go. All right. And it speaks to everything that I do, my motivational speaking, keynote speaking. Um, I created workshops that I'm very, very excited about mm -hmm. because I am 
the founder and the creator of Becoming a Better You workshops, where now I have a partnership with the Harlem Children's Zone. Oh, yeah, And, yeah, yes, yeah. I work in the evening um, sometimes with them, with their youths. So mm. I'm, I'm very excited about um, where I was and where I'm at today. There you go. Yeah, yes. You're helping others get what they need out of life, and that's important. Absolutely. Important. So who's going to be at the walk? Everybody. Everybody is going to be at the walk now. <laughs> what, you okay, got elected so, officials speaking? Any? Okay, so I'm working on that now. Uh -huh. I actually reached out to the health department looking to get someone to speak to mental health, which someone spoke, called me back and said they're working on it. Yeah. I just sent the email to the mayor's office because, as you know, our first lady, she has the mental in, health yeah. thrive New York City. Mm -hmm. And it would be wonderful if she can come out and speak to mental health and talk about the initiatives that she have going on. As you know, mental health is on the rise today. Yeah. yeah. And um, it ties, it's a, it's a direct link to self-esteem, awareness, and, you know, who you are, how you, how you feel. So... Um, what do you tell women about self or just people in general, youngsters, about mm -hmm. self-esteem? Confidence comes from within. No TV show, magazine, video is going to define who you are. You have to look in the mirror and you have to ask yourself, who am I? I, I said am it wrong with you. I mouthed yes. the words when you said it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who am I? Yes. It's very important that you know your self-worth. Mm -hmm. You know your value. Because when you don't know those things, it's very hard to build and have confidence mm -hmm. and, and even climb on to yourself your, your, your purpose in life you yes know, where do I go from here what do I do why am I here absolutely you know, what mark do I want to make absolutely you know? and so, so as a coach you go around you you visit different schools and you yes I do I will yes I work with youth um, different ages the, the youngest was third graders mm -hmm. my highest is seventh to eighth graders I'm working on my high schoolers and I find it very interesting with them because they go through so many different things. Yeah. And what I know is that some children have a hard time talking to their parents. And this is mm. through my working mm. with them. Yeah. My fourth workshop, I do something called the book review, which is this book. I have them read this book prior and then we discuss it. And what I know to be true is that I have over 60 short stories. And those young girls, they all can identify to one of them. I ask them their name. I ask them why did they choose that story. And then they're able to express to me why. You'd be surprised how much our youth are going through right now yeah. and um, how closed in about it they are. So I am very happy yeah. to come in and make a difference. All right. So once again, we're going to start off. We're going to kick it all off at the Harlem State Office building. Yes. June 2nd. Yes. Saturday, On June Saturday. 2nd, uh -huh. at 2 p.m. And you are looking for everybody to join you. Yes, Let's I want go. everybody. Come one, come all. It's going to be fantastic. We're, we're going to celebrate life. Yes, we're celebrating life. life. You know, um, come and get this positive energy. You know, if you're a person who's dealing with mental health issues, depression, this is the place to be. You have mm. to come out to I Self Express, second annual self esteem walk. Bring your entire family. You're going to come and get that really feel good energy. Make your signs, your powerful signs. And mm. we're going to walk, we're going to chant, and we're gonna, I'm going to ask you I am you, you are me, together we are one. Woo! There you go. Give a big hand, everybody. Carissa Jenkins, author, life coach, philanthropist. Yes. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. you for stopping by, and good thank luck you. with the walk and everything. June 2nd, kicking off at the Harlem State Office Building. We have to take a quick break, but stay right here. We'll be right back. and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. 
Love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. And welcome back. Our next guest is an author and empowerment coach and joins us for a look at her work and our latest projects. We welcome Sabrina Graves to the show. Sabrina's in the house. Good morning. Good How morning are you? God bless you. God bless you. Now, you belong to, what was the? Uh, the Breaker Nation? Breaker Nation. Yes, Breaker Nation. Breakers in the house. Yeah. Yes, with Dr. Soroya Bird McKinney. We are yes. uh, a family of people who are looking to break free. There of the go. things that are dealing, we're dealing with. Now, uh, you're you're a coach. Yes. And you do a number of things. I see you have a uh, you're an author also. You have yes. a couple of books. Which one came out first? Well, what came out first is Help Me I'm Broken. Help Me I'm Broken. Uh, yes. After 15 years, I was divorced and very depressed and extremely unhappy. And I had so many things inside of me, I couldn't express it. I'm an artist, and yeah. I love to paint and I love to draw but I couldn't paint the pain. You out. had a block. You had a blockage there. You know, and so yeah. since I couldn't get anything out, I started to write. I started to write the things that I was feeling to express myself. Yes. Because, you know, I wouldn't do well in prison, so uh, <laughs> killing him was not an option. So I understand. what I had to do was I had yeah. to get it out. So I wrote the things uh, about going to get the bus out the depot and yeah. running him over, uh, and <laughs> then backing the bus over to see if he's still breathing. And uh -huh. if he is, running him over again. But, you know... <laughs> So I you're a comedian, that. too. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be funny. But what I understood uh, is, you know, I had to release that pain yes. or it was going to kill me. Yeah. And so I got a coach in December of 2015. And by God March, bless our coaches. Yeah, I love. Yes. She's a business coach. She is Dr. Tiana Von Johnson. She is oh, phenomenal. Yeah. And so she got me a speaking engagement in March. And she said, you need a book. And I, books aren't something you just come up with just yeah. like that. Yeah. So I was like, how am I going to get a book? So I was meeting. I was having a mastermind with some friends. And one of them said, you already have a book. I was like, I do. I'm so glad you paper. told me. Yeah. She said, all of your writings, the things that you've been writing about, your ventings, your motivational speaking, that's a book. Put it together. Yeah, so yeah. I did. And it became Help Me, I'm Broken, which is a guide to emotional recovery. It's actually just writings from when I was in my darkness phase my recovery yeah. phase, and the future phase. And I think everybody who's dealt with depression mm -hmm. goes through that. You know, I've sat in my house, yeah. and I've waited for it to just get dark, praying that the morning wouldn't come. Wow. And I've gone through the recovery phase of the denial and the I hate you and uh, all of those things, that those emotions that this you This was all through marriage? It was after my marriage. Yeah. You know, um, my sister said it best. I was in love with him, and he let me be. And I think a lot of women go through that, where the depth of your feeling is not yeah. reciprocated. And that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate him today. Uh, I don't necessarily love to speak to him, but... You may want to thank him. I got the best part of him. You may want to thank him. You know, I have my son. Uh, my baby is 35 years old. Uh -huh. I talk about him like he's six, but he's 35 years old, and yeah. I love my baby. He is the best thing that my ex-husband ever did. Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that after... I, and I he created him. a great awareness in you. Well, what I tell so people—that's why I said you got to thank him. What I love to tell people <laughs> is that's the best 250 pounds I ever lost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I wrote uh -huh. my first book, which is "Help Me, I'm Broken," uh -huh. uh, because I think we all go through that time of need where I don't have the direction and it's lost to me. What do you tell people who, who, who maybe are kind of are reluctant to? putting the pen to the paper at this point, how do they get that out of their system? However how you should can they get start, it out. coach? Talk. Talk to somebody. You know, I used to go in my sister's office. I've been with the city of New York for about 30 years, and I would go in my sister's office, and I would rant and rave and vent. You know, I believe in counseling. I think yeah. the best thing I ever did was go to counseling. And Even you need though, somebody that can sit and listen to you. Yeah. I don't yeah. think most people want answers. What they want is someone to talk to. They want someone to hear them. Yeah, yeah. And so, it, you know, I'm a great proponent of active listening. 
Mm -hmm. You know, most people will find their own answers if you just listen to them. And, and that's what I do as a coach. And that's what I suggest people do. But there is a way for you to express those mm -hmm. things that you're dealing with, those feelings that nobody understands. But there is nothing anyone goes through that somebody else has not gone through. That's right. That's and right. if you don't tell somebody about it, they can't tell you, I went through the same thing. But or since I everybody has their own individuality and personality, they approach it differently. You know, they got, have to find a way to handle it. Yeah. They have to reach out to somebody like you that can open that up for them. Well, what I understand help is them to open it up. anything that doesn't confront you won't change you. And yeah. if you allow it to destroy you from the inside, it, it's what will take away those dreams. You know, my company is just imagine possibilities. And I invite people to look at me and imagine the possibilities. Uh -huh. I mean, I was over 400 pounds in 2007. No. Yeah, yeah. I look like Mary from no. the Weather Girls. That's what I tell people all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and my sister hates that picture, but I love it. Uh, but <laughs> it, it was what happened when I let the disappointment in my life consume me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had battled with my weight for a long time. I lost weight, I gained weight, I lost weight. I got down to 210 pounds, I was excited. And someone I thought would have my back looked at me and said, you know, because I tucked my shirt in my pants. And if you've ever been overweight, being able to do that is a big deal. That's a big so deal. So I tucked my shirt in my pants, my I went to see you. My shirt is outside of my pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> Present company oh, excluded, just go of like course. This. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and they go to the wide shot. <laughs> <laughs> but, what I did, I went and I had my, tuck sh my shirt tucked in my pants, and he looked at me and said, that is so not a good look for you. Yeah. You should never tuck your shirt in. Wow. And I was devastated. I worked yeah, so hard. Yeah. I was going to the gym five, six hours a day. I was doing How everything possible. And this is what he said. And I didn't do anything. I just said, I'll get over it. I'll deal with it. And I didn't. Wow. But I gained 200 pounds since that point. Wow, yeah. You know, basically to get back so at him. put you back in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the second book out. What's that about? The second book is my favorite. This is, I started it first. It's The Price of the Passion. Mm -hmm. It tells people that God loves you, which I yes. don't think enough people hear. You know, and it says that God's love for you is free. Ooh. But it's going to cost you something. So after the first book, the second book came out, but then you said, but God. Yeah. That's what it is. It's all about God's love for us. And he does love us, but it's going to cost you something. And yeah. are you willing to pay the price? And What's that's that? what this book is. It's a novelized way of looking at the story of Christ. It's mm -hmm. a novelized way that'll make you laugh. It'll make you shout. It'll make you sit there and shake your head and say, I do understand. You know, one of my favorite stories is the prodigal son. Yes. And the way I see it, you know, he goes to his father and said, you know what? I'm tired of waiting for you to die. So since you won't hurry up and do it, but how about you give me my money and let me go? And I, my attitude is, oh, it's about to be a misunderstanding. Yeah. It's about to be some furniture maneuver. No, you <laughs> did not just come up in my face and talk about this to me. But that's what we do, and we don't understand mm. what we do to people. Sabrina, where can we go to get more information on this? Because this is great. This will take uh, two hours. You have so much great information. And you're a coach. Yes, yes. Um, my, uh, you can always send me an email at info at sabrinagraves.com. You can check out my new website, which will be out in the next week or so, which is sabrinagraves.com. Mm -hmm. And my books are available on Amazon.com. Take us out with a quick prayer. Oh, thank you, Lord God. We appreciate you. We love you. We thank you for every person that is here today. We thank you for Dr. Bob Lee and all of his assistants that are here today. And we pray blessings, and we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Give her a big hand, everybody. Sabrina Graves, President Sabrina Graves, Creates and Just Imagine Possibilities. Beautiful. Thank you. Come back again, will you? Yes, thank you. All right, you. we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have an attitude of gratitude. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking it out. Hey, check it out. On April the 17th, Fierce, they're going to be holding a development meeting for uh, immigration uh, plan for undocumented youth. So joining us with all the details, we have youth organizer, Bree, Bree Yearwood. Bree Yearwood is in the house. <laughs> Give a big hand and Bree is in the house. <laughs> Bree Thank Yearwood, Thank yes. You. So how did you get involved in this, helping undocumented well, I've been involved with FEAR since I was 13 years old as a member. I've been on staff for two years now, and as a youth organizer, my job is to help develop political consciousness, to build leadership development with the youth, and to generally just facilitate. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, with our campaigns, they're all youth-led, but it di directly um, fits the needs of the community at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, immigration, the undocumented campaign, is, it fits the need of what's going on right now mm -hmm. and what our youth need right now. Um, so a lot, a lot of undocumented out there, because uh, I was, I was saying uh, about a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to somebody, and I visit schools, and we do talks and everything. There was an ICE vehicle outside, so um, we, they were wondering where some of the people were. They didn't come to school that day because they saw the ICE vehicle out. They turned right back around, went the other way. So how do you work with the undocumented? How, how do you give them the courage to step up and do some of the things that they need to, to accomplish what they have to? Well, first we identify um, issues that's going on in their personal lives, and then we look at, we take it to a bigger picture. So directly looking at policies, acts that's been passed, um, looking at um, how they can get documentation. So mm -hmm. it's more about like educating how, they, how people can help themselves right now, and more or less just um, identifying the root cause to certain issues and tackling those issues head on. Yeah. Um, right now we're just working on a Know Your Rights handout to give to folks a, um, just, you know, a lot of information, a lot of materials that we can give out as far as outreach and frequently ask questions, um, notifications, if something were to close, um, just so folks are updated and they know what's going on and they don't yeah. get blindsided. So there are a lot of rights. Give us some examples of some of the rights that they should know about. Well, for example, um, when dealing with ICE, you should always um, have, like, well, I know that um, when dealing with ICE, I know that there's a lot of certain things that are similar when dealing with NYPD. So just knowing that you have the right to remain silent, like also knowing that you have the right to call a lawyer. But there's certain things that you should um, also be prepared for. Like, for example, if you have like um, that certain identification number, just in case if you do get arrested by ICE, so your family um, have the ability to contact you. Um, um, also knowing that to have a lawyer um, prepared, and, you know, just in the background, just in case if anything yeah. happened. Um, so the, the Know Your Rights handout is more about how to speak. Mm -hmm. um, with an ICE officer, maybe when you're inside of your home, the main important thing is just asking for a warrant, asking for the warrant to be either slipped underneath of the door or asking for a peephole not opening the door, things of that sort. Yeah. Um, and we do do know your rights trainings as well. Um, that's what the youth do. Um, and then, you know, you also got to let them know that they can go to hospitals and all this stuff if they need health care. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we talk about um, health care, jobs, um, licensing, mm -hmm. like just how, how can you get certain documents so that you can like, um, you know, live yeah. and like, you know, go about everyday life as a normal citizen. Yeah, so you've been working since you were 13, huh? Over there. Yeah, I was, I've been a member since I was 13. Fierce is a LGBT organization for mm -hmm. youth of color. Um, the whole thing is just to build political consciousness, youth-led campaigns, um, outreach and facilitation. So. I've been there since I was 13 years mm -hmm. old, and I'm 20 now, so it's been seven years. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> so it's been you're, quite some time. You're a veteran now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we're actually new to the Bronx. We uh -huh. just moved here about two years ago. Where were you before? Um, we was actually on 24th Street in Chelsea, Midtown Manhattan. Oh, okay, Manhattan. you were downtown, yeah. Yeah, we had like a smaller office. It was a really nice office, but now we got a huge house. <laughs> Where are you in the Bronx? Um, we're right by Fordham, actually. Um, we're on 24, 27 Morris Avenue. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Normally, we, we set people 13 and 24. People just walk right in. Our membership form. People can form, walk in. Off the yeah. Weekend. Our membership form is just two pages. Fill it out. Talk to the staff. We give you a tour. Who should join? Um, any LGBTQ not, um, youth of color between the ages of 13 to 24. We also accept allies. 13 to 25 is okay. 25 uh -huh. is okay. But mostly LGBTQ youth of color. Yeah. And you just want to create the awareness, let people know. 
about what's happening. Right now, you you do many other programs. Oh, yes. Right now, you're just um, working on undocumented. We have undocumented. We have homelessness. We have, we're uh -huh. trying to get a 24-hour drop-in center near the pier develop. Um, we have, we're doing an anti-bullying campaign. Uh -huh. It's just so many things that's going on. Police accountability. It's, we're just any, anywhere where there's a need, we try to cover that need, and it's not only just staff, it's really the youth, that we just try to build leadership development in the youth, so that the youth can actually take head of these campaigns, and they can be like, this is a policy that's been pushed out, let's go do this, let's yeah. do this direct action, let's go here in March, so it's, it's really great, because it, it just builds, it builds that, it yeah. builds the person up, you know? Do you have any events coming up yet? What's coming up right now? That um, well, every day we have something going on. <laughs> we have a lot of workshops that range from base building one-on-one -on -one to facilitation. Um, but as far as campaigns go, um, tomorrow from 3 to 5 p.m. will be the Immigration Undocumented Campaign Development Meeting. Yeah. That will be um, to just identify more issues that's going on in the community, to finish off the handbook mm -hmm. so that we could get it published, and then to just make sure that we're not missing any gray areas. Because, uh, you know... But we need people that are being mostly affected by it so, so we can understand everything that's going on. We have undocumented youth, but mm. we, we need more. <laughs> I like all the work. And you're, you're a success story for FIAS, right? Because you've been through it. You've yeah, I've been a them. member for a long time, yeah. and now I'm staff. So that's, that's what they try to do. They really try to build the members up and then try to get them as much skills as possible, and they get hired directly as staff. Um, it's just me and one other youth organizer, and the other youth organizer was also a member, and now they're staff. So uh, you have a website where we can go and, and see all this the our, wonderful um, work that website, you guys are doing. The only thing is our website is a little bit under maintenance. That's okay. Um, but it's www. Oh, we'll dot have everybody write it down so we can go on <laughs> later on after you fix it. I, I know no, you're fixing it after just, today. It's up. It's just that <laughs> <laughs> it's up. It's just that we have to have somebody come in and just fix it up for us. Twitter, a little Facebook, bit. Instagram. Yes, Facebook. We're always on Facebook. Instagram. We're on Instagram. Um, Fierce NYC. Fabulous, independent, educated radicals for community empowerment. Fierce. <laughs> there you go. And what's the website, just in case? Because we'll, we'll www. Dot. Right. FierceNYC.org. All right, so we're going to tell everybody to go back and, um, and, and tighten that up because <laughs> we're going to go on and check it out, okay? All right. You guys ready to check out the website? Yes. Look, look, they're all shaking <laughs> their heads. At home, they're shaking their heads too. So, hey, tighten up. The, we're going on right now. Tighten it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on, yeah, on our Facebook big for now. <laughs> go on your page for now? <laughs> go on Facebook for now. Facebook, okay, there you go. All right, Undocumented Youth Immigration Campaign Development Meeting. It's coming up. The date is? Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. From 3 to 5 p.m. 3 to 5 p.m. 2427 Morris Avenue. Just Tuesday, ring the bell. April 17th. <laughs> All right. Bree Yearwood, give her a big hand, everybody. Youth organizer, organizer at Fierce. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we have to take a quick break, but stay right there. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. We'll be back with more open next. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. For all the papas out there, let's stop what we're doing and take a moment. A moment to be with our kids. They can be loud moments. <laughs> Goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments, kooky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count because every time dads take a moment to be with their kids, well, it's pretty momentous. So let's all take a moment to make a moment today. Hi, I'm David Lesh, legal correspondent to the morning show Open. If you have a legal question that you'd like me to answer, please send me an email at davidlesh at bronxet.org and I will address it on our Ask Your Lawyer segment. Welcome, 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 welcome back. On April the 17th, New York Senior Medicare Patrol is going to be holding a, a health fraud workshop. Joining us with all the details, we have volunteer coordinator Victoria Thornton. How Welcome. are you? Thank you. How are you? I'm great. So, 
healthcare fraud. Yes. You're trying to create the awareness, to let people know more about it, or how to navigate through healthcare. Or, or all of all the, the above. above. Yes, yes. The New York Senior Medicare Patrol program, we work really to help seniors know what type of scams can be infiltrated in the Medicare program. Their health care is so important, and I'm sure you know yeah. you probably have family and friends who are in Medicare, and they rely on that program yeah. for so many different things. So for it to be infiltrated and for them to have some of their um, benefits lost due to healthcare fraud or for them to be a victim of medical identity theft, uh -huh. all of these things they should be aware of and so we're trying to educate them. What are some of the things that they can look forward to or, or, or try to watch out for? Oh, it's very, very practical. The people are calling, that people are trying to uncover information that they can use or take it away from you? That's definitely a given. Yeah. You have scammers all the time giving you phone calls, telling you um, you have to confirm your Medicare number. And as you know, right now, the Medicare numbers oh. are Social Security numbers. Yeah, so yeah. it's very, very dangerous to give that information over the phone. Um, and even though the Medicare numbers are switching, they're going to be random numbers, um, it's still dangerous because if you give it yeah. to someone, they can bill Medicare for claims that have never um, existed, right? And you'll know because you'll get a call saying, hey, uh, yeah. did you use this service or something like that? So you'll and see it on your statement, yeah. actually, yeah. And, and, and wait a minute, I... I Nobody ever, nobody took me there. Right. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> it's a clear sign when you look at your Medicare statement, your Medicare summary notice, and you see a doctor's name that you don't recognize, or you see a service that you know you've never had done. You, you were in Jamaica va service. vacationing, right, yeah, right, yeah. and so you weren't there. Um, that's a clear sign that you've probably been a victim of healthcare fraud. And what so, are some of the other things that you look out for? Um, definitely the dates. So if you look at your statement and you see a date for a service that you don't recognize. That's a clear sign that um, somebody has been using your Medicare number um, and you want to check it out, you want to verify it, and get that money refunded back to Medicare yeah. for your own sake, but also if you paid anything, if you paid a co-payment for that service that wasn't true, you want to make mm. sure that you get that money refunded. And some of the ways that they've grasped hold of your information is by, one of the ways is by phone. Somebody yes. called you and asked you a question. Yes. What are some of the other ways? So um, a lot of times people get cards, postcards that say that they're offered free medical supplies, right? And so they're like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm so happy for this supply. So they give over their information. Oh. And so that way you have fraudulent suppliers and vendors who use their information to bill Medicare for false claims. So you tell seniors... Yes, Don't keep give all of that information to yourself. Give it only to your health care provider when you're going to the doctor yeah. or the hospital. Yeah, but yeah. people are slick, though. People yes. know how to, you know... you. It's true. If you call 100 people, you're going to get five or 10. Yeah. And the I mean, the percentage is pretty high sometimes. Definitely. Definitely. Scammers don't target one person specifically. They call as many people as possible. And then in the off chance, they'll get one person who answers the phone. And then they're slick talkers. They want to tell you they're with Medicare or they'll tell you that, you know, your health care is in jeopardy if you don't give over this information. Sometimes the call can get a little bit threatening. So, yeah, they're, they're very slick and they yeah. call everyone who appears to be of a certain age for their information. Yeah, and um, in general, you, you should shred your, your, your information because oh, if you yes. just open up your envelopes and your, even if you go to the, um, the drugstore, the pharmacy, yeah. and you know they put your name and address and everything on that outside and they yes. staple it. Yes. And some people just throw that away and open up the medication. Mm -hmm. That is your so true. Your name and, and address is on that, that box or that sheet. Exactly. You have to shred I mean, that. Even with your Medicare statements, that has all of your information. It has your doctor's names, your services, right? Yeah. You want to shred that. After you read it through, shred that information. If it's old and you don't need it anymore, you don't want to keep that information. Go to AARP's website. I'm not promoting anybody, but I... No, they're wonderful. Yes, they, absolutely. They have a shred fest going on. One is in Brooklyn and one is at uh, Esplanade Gardens. Uh, they have several week. different locations, yeah. yeah, so definitely check them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they have something called a shred fest. So people, there's long lines of people with bags and shopping carts full of stuff. And it's great, this truck though. comes and they shred all of that stuff. Yes, you have to shred your information. Yeah. If you keep it lying around or if you throw it around and throw it in the dumpster, you have scammers who go dumpster diving uh, for that information. So 
you've been working on this for a while, right? Yeah. Um, what organization are you working with? Live on New York. Live on New York. Yes. Yeah. So we're a nonprofit organization, and we um, house the New York Senior Medicare Patrol. Um, and we go around. We do a lot of different workshops. Um, we have we go to health fairs, really just making sure that seniors know the mm -hmm. different practical steps that they can do to make sure that they're safe from all of these scams. That's great. That's yeah. great. The patrol. Yes. <laughs> so you have uh, an event coming up? Yes, tomorrow we're going to be at Riverdale Senior Services. That's tomorrow, um, the 17th. Mm -hmm. From 1 to 2. From 1 to 2. Um, and so please come out, learn a little bit more about Medicare, learn about Medicare fraud and how you can protect yourself. And uh, can we go onto a website and check out all, all yep. of the information? Uh, go on to liveonnewyork.com, and if you're interested in volunteering, because we have a lot of volunteers who help us give the workshops, help us do all of the, the events that we do, so feel free to... You need to... volunteers and people... Oh, little... definitely. Oh, here we go. Definitely. I'm going to give up a camera right here. <laughs> okay. Say hello to my little friend. Hello. <laughs> and then ask for what you want. Yes, please, if you're interested, if you love to teach, if you speak another language, please feel free to give me a call. Uh, reach out to us via Facebook on the New York Senior Medicare Patrol. Uh, a Facebook page and please let me know because I would love to have more volunteers come and help us. Yeah. And they can go to liveonnewyork.com. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Victoria Thornton, volunteer coordinator, liveonnewyork.com. Dot org. Dot I'm org. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Give her a big you. hand, everybody. <laughs> liveonnewyork.org. We have to take a quick break right here, but stay tuned. I promise we'll be right back. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Sometimes things just happen, devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Gonna clap like this, everybody say yay! Welcome back, everybody. The camera people, everybody in the house, and you at home are clapping. Thank you so much. Hey, you know, on April the 21st, the Sickle Cell Thalassemia Patients Network, they're gonna be holding the annual gala. So joining us with all the details, we have Dorita. And Doris Hello. Blanco's in the house. Hello. They call you Dorita, right? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. And Thank you're no you. stranger to the show. You've been here before sharing this wonderful information. Yes. You have something coming up? Yes, we have the gala coming up this Saturday, April 21st. April 21st. Everybody has the, the information, the, 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 the events coming up, like, right away. Oh, yes. <laughs> In a hurry. It's here. Oh, yeah. All right. So who's going to be there? What's going to happen? Um, so the main thing about the gala is the goal of the gala is to honor the achievements of individuals that have helped the sickle cell community. Mm -hmm. So right now we actually have two honorees. We have several, but two of them specifically are um, Bronx natives. Uh -huh. um, Catherine Mini, MD Director at Sickle Cell Center in Montefiore, and also another Bronx native, Howard Goodman, from the P Pediatric Hematology Center, Bronx, Lebanon. Yeah, yeah. So beautiful. that's fun. Now, for those who, who don't know, 
I don't know what the sickle cell sickle, is. Yeah, and don't know what the, some of the patients are going through. Explain what sickle cell thalassemia is. So sickle cell is a blood disorder. Basically, our cells don't get enough oxygen, so the lack of oxygen makes the cells sickle, and they get the shape of like a moon shape of a crescent or yeah. a sickle. And um, they get clogged very easily, so anywhere so where the there's blood, blood can't flow. Exactly. So anywhere where right there's blood, the we can get a pain crisis because of the obstruction. So it's a very painful disease, um, and a lot of problems can occur from, you know, blood clogs. What the body. happens when you get a pain crisis? I mean, it feels terrible. At times, it feels like someone's stabbing both my legs or just. Going on, going on my legs with a bat, like a batting cage practice. And at the same time, you're feeling like there's like little hot ants just eating away at your bones. Wow, yeah. That's just one of the it's types of pain. excruciating <laughs> pain. Yeah, it is. I mean, definitely there's more treatments now for sickle cell. So Finally. if there's a crisis, do you, you have to yeah, you call have an to ambulance, stay. you have to go to the hospital? Definitely. I mean, almost everyone I know that has sickle cell, we always have a grab, to, grab bag ready for you know, emergencies. Yeah. Um, so we spend a lot of time in the hospital, but... Um, and, and what do they do? Um, well, the first thing is to get hydrated, just to get the blood flowing and moving, and um, pain treatment. They're just trying to treat the pain and yeah, yeah. a lot of pain medic medicines. Um, and that usually lasts for what, a couple of days? A couple of days, a couple of weeks, it depends. So, I mean, for me, an average crisis will last from three to five days. Can you so, tell when it's getting ready to come on? Sometimes. Sometimes I do, and well, I can prepare it for it. You. Yeah, and other times I'm just walking, you know, taking a walk in the park, and all of a sudden, oh, my leg, I can't move. <laughs> so oh it's God. like, it depends. It's whenever it feels like mm -hmm. creeping up on you. <laughs> so you're raising money? Yes. So this year, for the gala, um, we're raising money for the organization. We're doing a lot of things with it. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we're actually some sickle cell volunteers. Mm -hmm. We're training them to become community health workers, including myself. And um, it's exciting because there's a lot of, um, we're trying to bridge the gap from patients in their teens transitioning from pediatric to adult side. And um, it's scary because the highest death rate for sickle cell is between 16 years old to 25. And one of the reasons being the lack of transitioning programs out there. And when I mean, when I say transition, I mean, yeah. you know, when you're in pediatric, you have doctors, second, everyone's calling you and basically holding your hand throughout the whole. So you don't have that anymore. So you don't have that anymore. So it's basically that. like, ah. you're just, okay, bye. <laughs> you know, and you have to do it on your own and it's tough. I mean, it's tough for any teen, just growing up and yeah. transitioning from, a, you know, teen to adult, add a disease and a chronic painful disease in their mates. So they have to be, they have to be right there on, they have to look for a program like yours to, to help them with that transition. Exactly. So um, right now we're being trained and hopefully we'll be able to accommodate them with all types of services that they need, ranging from their sickle cell needs mm -hmm. to, you know, dental to skin care, whatever, and the whole package, not just looking and focusing on the sickle cell. Do you have to do things differently if you go to the dentist or go to other? Yes, definitely. I mean, you? anything can trigger a, cry, a pain crisis, and definitely you have to let them know that you are a sickle cell patient yeah. just so they can really take their time and make sure that they're, you know, yeah. they have things in place if something happens. What are some of the triggers? Some of the triggers can be the weather. I mean, for anyone, the weather changing, you know, this bipolar weather we're having in New York. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty tough, but... The weather definitely stress, too happy, too sad. I mean, it's crazy sometimes, the things that will trigger a pain crisis. Wow, yeah, yeah. So you need volunteers to help you, or you need people to come up with some, write some checks? Yes, please. <laughs> but, All right, um, let's go to my friend over here. This is your camera. Do your thing. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say if you guys can just come out and support us for this gala, the 25th annual gala that we're having this Saturday, April 21st. Um, is it going to be at Grand Prospect Hall from 7.30 on and come and let's have some fun and eat good food and meet cool people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're tax exempt, so if they write a check or anything. Exactly, then you, know, you help taxes. us, we help you. Yeah, 
And there's, there's the rest of your information right there. Look at that. Yes, it is. You have to say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this one right here? Yeah. <laughs> so SCTPN is a 501 tax exempt organization. We provide education, advocacy, referral services, and support, support for individuals and families living with sickle cell disease and other inherited blood disorders. Yeah, so you write a check right there, it, it's tax deductible. You can write it off on your taxes. Definitely. Right. Is there a website we can go to? Yes, you can go to sctpn.org, uh -huh. or you can contact us at, you can email us if you need and have any questions or anything you want to ask us at dinnerdance at sctpn.net. And if we go, we can dance with you? Definitely, All of right. course. Let's <laughs> <Yeah>. do it. <laughs> Dorito, give her a big hand, everybody. Doris Polanco, Sickle Cell Thalassemia Patient Network. Thank you so much. Well, thank and you. And always come you by and continue to share because there's a lot of people that I know who are dealing with the sickle cell. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. We have to take a quick break, but stay tuned. We'll be right back. Cheru has no choice. She and millions like her walk miles a day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses. It's true. When you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. My name is Osvaldo Adames. I grew up in the Bronx and went to school right here at the Bronx School for Law, Government, and Justice. In the seventh grade, I hadn't given college that much thought. But all of that changed when I entered the Bronx Institute at Lehman College's Gear Up program. Gear Up helped simplify the entire college application process, helping me prepare for the SATs and organizing college visits and open houses. Last year, I graduated from Hamilton College in upstate New York with a major in mathematics and a minor in Mandarin Chinese. Now, I'm a teacher at my old middle school. I think back to seventh grade, and I honestly had no idea how much help Gear Up would be. They offered me the support I needed to succeed. If you're enrolled in Gear Up, talk to your academic coach or visit the Bronx Institute at www.thebronxinstitute.org for more information. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. And welcome back, everybody. On April the 21st, community groups, will, they're going to be joining together for an Earth Day parade in Co-op City. You ever been to Co-op City? We got it going on over there. Joining us with all the details, we have landscape designer Zainab Miller, Nadine Bly of Co-op City Little League, and uh, uh, Sayo, Sayo Cadet, Carla Rodriguez. CYO. Cadet. CYO. CYO. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. First time here on the show? Yes. Oh, we're going to get them. Let's get them. Bring out the cat. No. <laughs> so you guys are in co-op. What, what section? Uh, it's, well, it's next to the co-op city uh, Little League field. So that would be about section four. I pass through there every now and then. You have that, uh, that fence there, right? And uh, mm -hmm. they're playing yeah. inside. The fence. Yeah. I see you guys operating yep. at work. So tell us about what you have going on. Well, on April 21st, Saturday, there'll be a uh, Earth Day celebration and a uh, family, so family day. And uh, it will be, um, it's sponsored by Assemblyman Michael DiBenedetto, uh -huh. I'm sorry, Benedetto, uh, Councilman Andy King. Andy King has an office, right, in, uh, yep. I think, Section 5. 
uh, in section one, there's one, one of his office. Yep, yep, in the one of the uh, community centers, he has an office. Okay. And also the River Bay Fund, so they're sponsoring it. And um, uh, Assemblyman Benedetto will be the, officiating the uh, parade, yeah. which will, and we're co-sponsored with the Co-op City Little League, and the CYO cadets are going to be performing, and we're going to march down to the fields and to the garden and have a really fun day. Oh, that's beautiful. Did you go down to uh, Bronxboro President's uh, Gospel Show? Oh no, that was at that was at the community center. Yeah, I, didn't see I was it, the though. host over there. Yeah. That was really very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. So you guys are in the neighborhood. So you have all this coming up, and you're working in the community, helping others. Mm -hmm. Of course, I like the helping others get what they need out of life. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. And you have the cadets over there. Yes. So um, the CYO Navy cadets. We are actually based here, not far from here, mm -hmm. on University and Fordham, on Saint Nicholas of Solentine School. We meet there. We've been there for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, Gail, which is um, the person who got us involved with them, she dresses up as Mother, Mother Nature, Nature uh -huh. yes. which is beautiful. Her grandson actually was in the cadets, oh, yeah. and that's kind of how we were able to link up. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is that we provide music, um, we march through the co-ops with them, playing uh -huh. music, playing different types of stuff. When we get into the field, um, we pretty much play um, ball game, and we do the Star Spangled Banner. But I've been with the cadets since I was eight, so. I was a cadet <laughs> at that age. Really? I think at 12, 13, 14, something like that. No, yeah. I'm still here. I'm 30 now. <laughs> and that's beautiful. you got to stick with it. Mm -hmm. And what part do you play? Well, I'm with the Co-op City Little League, and basically we are going to have our teams uh, line up and kind of participate in the march. Mm -hmm. And everyone will kind of march all the way to the um, baseball field where we will have like a meal give out some hot dogs and things like that, and we have our games that will be scheduled to play so everyone can kind of link up and participate and kind of cheer the team on. That's beautiful. There you go. There you go. And how long have you been doing this? Well, I think um, I'm kind of <coughs> new with um, the Little League, so they've been doing it maybe for the past, what, this is their second this year? This is their second year. And mm -hmm. so this is their second year um, kind of doing that. and. The baseball is basically to kind of get the kids together, get the community together, um, you know, participating with the garden so that we can kind of show the community how to eat healthy as well as have a good time and play well. Healthy eating, healthy living, yeah. Yes. Discipline yes. with the cadets. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do they qualify? Um, well, they can be anywhere from ages 7 to 18. They come, we meet every Friday. We run like a school year from mm -hmm. September to June. Um, so they come and we compete with other cadet corps. We actually mm -hmm. have our competition coming up on the June 10th. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, band, we were doing a band exhibition, um, a tribute to Michael Jackson. So it's going to be a lot of fun band. Um, we play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, we're actually there. We're always looking uh. for new people to come in. We train them. We go on um, annual camping trips, which we go up to Deer Park and the kids get a chance to get out of the city, which is sometimes the first time ever for some of them. So seeing them react to different insects and animals is right. lots of fun. You stay out of the poison ivory. <laughs> um, do you have tents and sleeping bags and everything? No, we stay in a cabin. They do bring up sleeping bags because they put the sleeping bag on top of the of the bed. But it's 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 the whole nine yard, and then we do, do a fire. Mm -hmm. We have s'mores. We do the obstacle mm -hmm. courses and stuff with them. And they, it's all ages, so they're able to kind of interact with each other and learn from each other. It's like kind of like as you grow older, you kind of start mentoring the younger ones. I so. remember um, we were sleeping in tents, and uh, somebody was didn't have a sleeping bag, and I was a nice guy. I gave up my sleeping bag and froze my ass <laughs> off all <laughs> night with just a blanket. <laughs> I did that when but, I was in the Marine Corps. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the Marine Corps. We barely got any. I had second thoughts after. Because when morning time comes and that frost yes. and everything hits yeah. you, you're like, what the did I just do? I gave up my sleeping bag. 80 but degrees during the day, Somebody else was it warm, drops. So it was a good yeah. Thing. Yeah. 80 degrees during the day, then in the nighttime, it's like, uh -huh. what happened? So you have that, and you have to be disciplined Correct. because you, you teach them all of that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And then to play sports, yeah. They have to discipline themselves, too, to and go through that. I think they, the volunteers, like, we are actually, um, we've been around for, like, since 1969, and this is going on to our um, 50th um, golden All anniversary. Right. 
And we are doing really well. We started off the season, we had like an unofficial season, and we started out well. Both our minor and major teams won, so they are like ready oh, to go. Oh, give them a big yes. hand, everybody. <laughs> Winners in the house. Oh, yeah. Co-op City Little job. League, hey. Yeah, so they're, they're doing really well, and mm -hmm. we're working towards, um, you know, we <clears> was <throat> able to get a um, SNY grant, like 550, like $5,000, which we kind of beat out over 200 other leagues to uh -huh. get this grant. So we can kind of work on our fences, painting, our, um, you know, all the different things that we need to get done, um, amplifiers, things like that. And we also... Amplifiers. Was, well, yeah, because we actually have scoreboard, yeah, and we have, we're going to start to try to do announcing, you oh, know, the players. Oh, you're going to teach they, somebody announcing. That's, yeah, so that. we're going to, uh -huh. um, we're going to we do it up there, you know, have uh -huh. a great concession stand with, you know, popcorn and slushies. So we're, we're going to, you know, come out, see the game. You don't even have to have kids there. Just come in for the entertainment. And how does the healthy eating, healthy living thing come into play? Well, because with... With the, with the garden, the garden and the, right? So they can learn how to eat healthy. Because you know, with kids, especially if they grow oh, yeah. it, they will eat it. Right. You know, one of those things you don't force them to eat the vegetables. But if they grow the vegetables, they're gonna want to eat their vegetables. Yeah. You know, so they go and learn how to garden and have that, and then <laughs> they can have that exercise, get away from the Xbox, and play some games. There you go. There you go. Because yeah. there were a lot of games back in the day, but mm. uh, I think a lot of people don't know too much about mm -hmm. them right now. Very true. <laughs> well, there's yes. volleyball, hopscotch, yes. ring area, one, two, three, jump you rope. name it. Kick Those the games were out yeah. there, right? Yeah, jump rope was something. Yeah, yeah double dutch. Yeah, <laughs> because everybody's busy. You know. Yes. So, you guys need extra money? You're always looking for money. Well, we've, uh, we've had support from uh, Assemblyman. Benedetto's office, mm -hmm. and we've had support from Fairway Market, but we would, we would need, we would like right, some. You got 30 seconds. That camera right there, you got it. Ask okay. for it. Well, um, so please come and support in person, but also if you have some funds to support uh, the uh, Family Fun Day and the Earth Day Parade, uh, you can donate. You can look us up online by going to, just put in Rivers Run Community Garden, Co-op City, and you can find out where to donate. All right. Thank, thank you guys you. so much and good thank luck you. with everything. Thank you for working with our youth. We need you. <laughs> and we thank you. And God thank bless you. God bless Give you. Give them thank a big you. hand, everybody. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us and uh, you, our viewer, for tuning in and checking it all out. If you missed any part of today's show, where well, you can tune into the Recablecast of Open at 5 and 10 p.m. or you can watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org or you can catch an all-new episode Wednesday at 10 a.m., the host, Darren Jaime. For all of us here at BronxNet, have a great and enjoyable day, and I'll see you on the radio. There you go. <laughs> Always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you, and what you make of yourself is your gift to God, so choose your choice and let your choice control the chooser. And remember, whether you say you can or you can't, either way, you're right. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. Catch you another day, another way. Love you all. Peace.